The Life and Ending of Natalie Wood, A Short but Vibrant Life. Audiences fell in love with Natalie Wood as the dubious Susan Walker in Miracle on 34th Street, but the breakout role was far from her last. She continued to make a name for herself in Hollywood for decades. Thanks to her glamorous style, tabloid-ridden romances, and Oscar-nominated performances. Now, nearly 40 years after the actress's tragic death, we're taking a look back at the life of Natalie Wood, from her days as a child star to her award-winning film career. The actress was born Natalia Nikolaevna Zakharenko on July 20th, 1938. Both her parents were Russian immigrants living in San Francisco, California. Wood's first acting jobs were uncredited roles in the 1943 films The Moon is Down and Happy Land. It was her performance in the latter, however, that caught the attention of director Irving Pichel, setting the four-year-old actress up for success. In 1945, Woods's mother moved the family to Los Angeles on the advice of Irving Pichel, who took an interest in the child star. It was Pichel who suggested that the young actress adopt the Americanized version of her name, Natalie, and change her surname to Wood after director Sam Wood. Wood made a big splash in her first major film role as Margaret Ludwig in Tomorrow Is Forever. She starred opposite Orson Welles, who referred to the young actress as so good she was terrifying. She followed her speaking role debut with multiple films that year and in 1947. Wood delivered one of her most popular performances as Susan Walker in Miracle on 34th Street, starring opposite Maureen O'Hara. At the age of eight, Woods' fate in Hollywood had been set. After the success of Miracle on 34th Street, Woods' contract with 20th Century Fox was updated to $1,000 a week, with the plan that her payments would build for seven years to $3,300 weekly. A nine-year-old Wood experienced a horrible accident on the set of The Green Promise. The actress fell through a broken bridge while filming a storm scene, nearly drowning. The incident left her with a protruding bone in her left wrist, as well as a lifelong fear of water. Throughout the early 50s, Wood struggled to convince studios that she can transition from child star to screen siren. As a result, she was mostly stuck with roles on television. Wood proved her talents at the age of 16 when she starred in her first mature movie role as Judy in Rebel Without a Cause alongside James Dean. The actress was nominated for her first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for the performance. After Warner Brothers cast Wood in Rebel Without a Cause, they also signed the former child star to a $400 a week, seven-year contract. Wood, seen here at her Los Angeles home with her mother, Maria Zakharenko and younger sister, had a complicated relationship with her mother, who managed her career. An aspiring performer herself, Maria reportedly pushed her daughters into the industry and was extremely controlling over their careers. Over the years, Wood expressed her frustration with the studio system in Hollywood. Stars weren't allowed to choose the movies they appeared in, as studios had all the power. With the momentum from Rebel Without a Cause, Warner Brothers lined up a number of films, including The Searchers, which was Woods' least favorite role, as she felt she wasn't properly cast. At the age of 17, Wood was a regular fixture in the gossip columns for her romantic interests, including a romance with Elvis Presley. However, the relationship ended shortly after it began. Wood appears among Hollywood's elite at the 1956 Modern Screen Awards, with the likes of Doris Day, Debbie Reynolds, Janet Leigh, Tony Curtis, and Kirk Douglas. Robert Wagner and Wood began seeing each other after a studio-arranged date. The couple got married on December 28, 1957, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Woods was placed on suspension by Warner Brothers after she refused roles in both The Miracle and A Summer Place and then failed to appear on the set of the Young Philadelphians in protest of another role she was not interested in. The star's stance against studio head Jack Warner paid off in her favor. She was given permission to choose one of the movies she was in every year. After her marriage to Wagner, the attention the couple received from the media increased significantly. More than five years after transitioning from child actor to legit screen star, 
would captivated audiences in West Side Story. Starring as a love-torn teenager, Maria, Wood did all her own dancing for the musical, although her voice was dubbed with Broadway star Marnie Nixon's. After five years of marriage, Wood and Wagner ended their marriage. Separating in 1961, Wood became involved with her Splendor in the Grass co-star, Warren Beatty. Beatty and Wood's relationship had his ups and downs, mainly due to Beatty's rumored infidelity. Two years after they started dating on the set of Splendor in the Grass, they parted ways. The actress's performance in Splendor in the Grass earned her a second Academy Award nomination and her first nod for the Best Actress title. At this time in her career, Wood was one of the top billed actresses in Hollywood and was competing for the biggest roles in the industry. One of Wood's most successful films was the 1963 movie Love with the Proper Stranger, which co-starred Steve McQueen. In 1964, at the age of 25, Wood received her third Oscar nomination. She became the youngest person to receive three Academy Award nominations, and she still holds the title to this day, though she sadly never actually won one of those Oscars. Woods's penchant for dazzling jewelry was well known, but it turns out there was a very practical reason for her bulky bracelets. After her childhood accident on the set of The Green Promise, her left wrist was left with a protruding bone and Wood would use her bracelets to cover it up. After a string of poorly received films, like Sex and the Single Girl in 1964 and The Great Race in 1965, Wood received Harvard Lampoon's Worst Actress of the Year Award. She seemed to have been in on the joke, though, because she attended the ceremony to accept the award. After a suicide attempt in 1966, Wood made the decision to take a step back from the film industry to focus on her mental health. Penelope was her last film for three years. Despite her retreat from the spotlight, Wood was still in demand for projects. During her Hollywood hiatus, the star turned down big picture films, including a lead role in Bonnie and Clyde. In a stellar return to the big screen, Wood starred in a movie about two swinger couples, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. The movie received rave reviews from critics and performed well at the box office. After her breakup with Beatty, Wood began dating British producer Richard Gregson in 1966. Three years later, the couple got married in a Russian Orthodox ceremony at the Holy Virgin Mary Church on May 30th, 1969. Wood and Gregson welcomed their only child together, daughter Natasha Gregson, on September 29th, 1970. We weren't raised by someone who seemed like a movie star at all, Natasha told HBO for Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind. Natalie's younger sister, Lena Wood, also earned her place in the spotlight, starring as Plenty O'Toole in the 1971 James Bond movie, Diamonds Are Forever. Wood was voted one of the top sex stars by Playboy magazine in the 1970s. In 1971, Wood and Gregson filed for separation. Their divorce proceedings were finalized the following year. After her separation from Gregson, Wood reunited with her ex-husband. She and Wagner were married once again in Paradise Cove in 1972. Two years after their reunion, Wagner and Wood welcomed their first child together, daughter Courtney Brooke Wagner, on March 9, 1974. She was raised alongside Woods' other daughter, Natasha Gregson, Wagner and Wagner's daughter, Katie Wagner, both from previous marriages. Wood was offered the role of Daisy Buchanan in The Great Gatsby, but the studio asked Wood to perform a screen test since she hadn't made a film in years. The actress reportedly refused, and the part ended up going to Mia Farrow. Wood and Wagner's relationship was stronger the second time around, with the actress more focused on her family than fame. While her children were young, she cut back on work. Woods' role in Brainstorm was supposed to be a major comeback for the star, after taking a step back from the spotlight throughout the 70s. Here, she poses with co-star Christopher Walken. On November 29, 1981, Wood drowned in the ocean off Catalina Island. The actress, only 43 years old, was on her yacht, The Splendor, with her husband and co-star, Walken. 
After initially being deemed an accidental drowning, the star's official cause of death was updated in August 2012 to say she died from drowning and other undetermined factors. In 1986, Wood was posthumously honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The late actress is survived by her husband, Robert Wagner, sister, Lena Wood, and two daughters, Natasha and Courtney. Thank you for watching.